the hottest show around, put that remote down You wanna know who was who, making moves in your community and warming you up It's a breakthrough, now that you focus now, put that remote down The hottest show around, it's time you know about What is new and who was who, making moves in your community and warming you now that y'all are tuning in, this is what they're doing in Breakthrough Television. They broadcasting all the movement. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Breakthrough Television, the most talked about cable television program where there's real talk, real people, and real entertainment. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Tyrone Jackson, and once again, thank you for tuning in to this television program. Tonight we have an awesome show for all your viewers who are watching here tonight. We know that you're going to enjoy the show. So, hey, call your friends, call your family, call everybody that you love. Hey, even call your enemies. Yep. Call them. They're the most important people that you want to watch this show with. <laughs> and get your snacks and everything. Try. And we, Huh? Stop. Stop. Yeah. What happened? Find it a great opportunity to be with you once again. Uh, my name is Elder Derek White, and this is my good friend. We are co workers in the Lord, and we are certainly glad to be here with you on today. On well, today, we're going to talk about some wonderful things. I think you're going to find this information quite intriguing. Um, come on, Regina, tell us a little about what we're doing today. Well, today we're going to um, go over the topic of preparing to win. Mm -hmm. and we all know that when we're preparing to win in anything in life, we must um, make plans and we must put aside um, our commitment and our dedication and all those things that we need to do to prepare to win. We just don't get up and run a race and say, okay, we're going to win this race today. We prepare for the race that we're going to win. And on that note, we're going to be talking about believing. What is it that you believe? What is it that you're thinking? And what is it that you're saying? Amen. Um, um, it's, it's so ironic. Um, past few weeks or even past couple of days, May, if I will, uh, I've been thinking about the change of the season. We're, we're coming into um, springtime and the season is changing. And one thing that's noticeable about the change is most, first, um, the weather changed, the temperature changed. 
and then we begin to see the leaves begin to bloom and the flowers begin to come forth. And, and so this is how we know that the season is changing, that the temperature will change. And, and we're hoping that, um, that many of you that are out there in, in TV land, I like saying that, um, if I may, um, we want you to be prepared for what's next in your life and being able to grab hold of those things. And um, a lot of people just don't know how to win. And, and a lot of time, um, success is not always financial. Yeah. Um, um, it's also spiritual, even natural, natural, being able to attain some things mentally, be able to grasp hold of things. And so this is what we're going to go in on today. Um, we're going to use for base scripture, Romans 12 and 1. I'm going to read it from King James Version. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, huh? holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, I think it's very important to understand um, that transformation is a key component in terms of attaining those things and what you need. Amen. Transformation is an important um, component. And um, when we talk about transformation, as you see, the Bible lets us know to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. So the first step into being transformed is to renew our mind. Mm -hmm. And so um, the word of God lets us know that when we become, you know, Christians, we need to transform our minds. And now the world is um, telling us all over the place. We meet every book that we read on success and how to succeed talks about how you transform the mind first. Mm -hmm. And even a therapist, when you go to a therapist, they take you back to where it all start and they try to pull down those beliefs, those strongholds and by transforming your thinking. So we know that the thinking and transforming the mind is a very, very important component. Mm -hmm. And it's funny how you bring up um, even um, speaking of therapists and those that work with you. Uh, but today we want to know what does God say about uh, what we think and what we say? Um, give that some thought. What does God say about what we think and what we say? Uh, the word of God also tells us that once we are born again, that we become a new creator. Mm -hmm. And old things are passed away. Before everything becomes new. Uh, we know that as believers, God wants us to be transformed by renewing our minds. And the word says, I have hid that word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. These are all great components in terms of understanding who you are in Christ. Um, you want to share on that just a little bit? Yes. Um, my, my favorite thing in the body of Christ is when people become newborn believers. And um, we have lived our whole life in this world system. In all of our lives, we have learned how to think like the world, how to think like those um, around us have taught us how to think. And what this is um, telling us is that to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And like you said, when we become new creatures in Christ, all things, all the old things are passed away. And so now we have to come up with a new way of thinking in order to win this walk, this Christian walk, because we, we're still on the t topic of preparing to win in order to be victorious in this Christian walk. And in order to walk the way God wants us to walk, we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Mm. And the way we need to do that is by reading the word of God and whatever is not in alignment with God word with God word we need to throw it out so if and whatever God word says even if we don't see it manifesting in our personal life we must know that it is truth and we must believe and that's why our first thing what is it that you're believing mm -hmm. and a lot of times we don't know what we believe as Christians because we are not reading the word of God we are not taking the time out to find out what's in the word what is it that we supposed to believe and one of my pet peeves is um, as newborn believers I believe that all newborn believers need to be in some type of environment where they are constantly being fed the milk of the word mm -hmm from the very beginning and being around um, 
other Christians that are newborn believers and mentors and being um, surrounded by people that can um, breathe life into them and show them what the word is about and how to operate in faith and how to talk in faith and how to move about and what to say when troubles come. So this is how we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. We no longer work the way the world system works. It's like when people get sick. We had a call last night about the young lady. Yes, we did. And um, the two and a half month old baby was sick. That's right. And as you know, as believers, we believe that by his stripes, we are healed. Mm -hmm. And we believe that whatever we say and whatever we command that, you know, shall be done, that we should be able to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Those are the things that we believe as Christians. Mm -hmm. But we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and we need to practice, you know, being able to talk so that it can fill our hearts. We meditate on these things day and night so that we will start living it just like it was second nature, just like a child when he's being, you know, learning how to talk and when he's learning how to walk and when he's learning how to ask for things. Sometimes it doesn't sound as clear. Mm -hmm. You know, they be saying hello. We don't know what they're saying in the beginning, but as time go on, it gets clearer and they get better at walking and they get better at talking and they get better at asking for things. The same thing in the word when we're being transformed over from our natural life to our su supernatural um, God filled life. Sometimes things might not be as clear. They, um, things might not happen as rapidly, but as we practice and as we prepare ourselves, that's how we prepare ourselves to be the best. We keep practicing just like an Olympics um, runner or someone in sports or whatever they practice what they need to do on a daily basis so that they can become good at what it is that they do. And the same thing with our Christian life. We need to prepare to win so we can be the best. And that's by starting to transform our life and exercise the things that God is telling us to do. Amen. Let me try to get a little two cents in. Here. Amen. Get your two she, cents she, in. You start talking as you see. She <laughs> just be going on. Um, but it's funny how um, you brought forth, uh, uh, we have our prayer line on every Monday evening. And um, a young lady, she began to share that a two, two and a half year old nephew, um, the baby was gravely ill. The doctors didn't know what was wrong. Um, and, and it aligns with what we're speaking about today in preparing to win. Sometimes you make a plan in your life and sometimes you set goals and you have ideals that you want to do. And but sometimes you have to be prepared to shift. Um, last night, um, when we on the line and we were prepared to prayer a prayer for a special prayer request and but when she shared that with us about the child there was a sense of urgency and so we have to shift our mindset even um the type of prayer that we prayed you know and and, and we did the other request first but, but we saved that one for last um because we didn't feel that we could just say any kind of prayer so we really want to really just touch god's heart uh um, we as a people, um, I want to even say as, as black folk, um, because um, most Christians get emotional um, when it comes down to, um, well, emotional, uh, emotionalism is tied to our spiritualism. When we go before God and we're praying and we're seeking God, we felt the need in shifting. And, and same thing in life, when you're trying to get things that you need to do, you have to shift. Um, as Regina was just sharing how the importance of being able to grow. Most babies need milk when they're born. And, and as you're growing, you have to understand that, that life and death is in the power of your tongue. And she spoke about the belief and, and believing in God. It becomes a transformation. Initially, uh, when you're born again, a lot of things you don't understand. But please understand and know that what you speak, you have to speak life. Um, you speak things that are negative, negative things will happen to you. And so what does God think or what does God's word say about what we think and say? Um, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And there's another scripture that said, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. If you don't have an understanding of God's word, you're going to perish. Um, you need to understand what you're doing. It's just like if you're going to a job to work, they train you. Amen. Um, they, they train you. Why? Because they want you to do well in what you're doing. Amen. All in and, preparation. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it makes a difference. Um, and that script speaks about the tongue is set on fire and the course of that nature. And whatever man is thinking is in his heart, 
what that's what the man is. Um, so is a man thinketh, so is he. Mm-hmm. It's an um, abundance of the heart. He speaks. Mm-hmm. And so if I think I'm nothing, guess what? Amen. I'm going to be nothing. Um, the, my presentation to other people is nothing. Uh, if I think I'm a five, my presentation will come before other people is a five. But be, please know that if you're in God, if I may, a terminology that, that uh, young men, uh, I don't know if they still use it. You know, I'm, I'm only 26. <coughs> <coughs> Lord, forgive me for my sins. <laughs> um, but we see young lady, uh, that's fine. We say, oh, that's a dime piece. You know, so a dime piece meant you're the top of the line. Um, but we want you to know to God, you, you're a dime piece. Mm. You're, because of your spirit, because of your renewal, you are a dime piece. You're top of the line. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important that you understand who you are and recognize where you come from and, and what God is trying to do in your life in terms of grooming you. Um, the scripture says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. This is how you grow. Um, it's important that your faith is well established. Um, come on, talk to me about faith. Amen. Well, I love faith, mm-hmm. and faith is aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, when we use faith, I, I was just the other night, I was thinking about faith and belief and doubt and all those other things. And faith, I come to understand, it says faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. It's the substance Mm -hmm. of things hoped for Mm -hmm. and the evidence of things not seen. So faith is not really believing that it could be done. Mm -hmm. Faith is knowing that it will be done. Right. You know, and I found that to be very... um, um, very powerful in my life because when we speak the word of God, because there's a, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about, and they use it a lot on TV. It talks about um, you should have whatever you speak. Mm-hmm. He says, um, and when you go to God in prayer, and there's, there's also another scripture that says, if my word abide in you and you abide in my word, you shall ask whatever mm-hmm. you want and it shall be done. St. John 15th so, chapter. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. faith is knowing that it will be done, not Mm -hmm. believing that God can do it because God's word already said he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. So we have to trust in his word and whatever his word says, we have to believe that enough to know that it's like the word is the substance. Right. You know, and um, the hope, you know, and it's the evidence. So the faith is evidence that it's coming to pass. So faith is is really yeah, and, and what John says, that he said, these things I write unto you, mm-hmm. um, that your joy may be full. Um, he wants you to be complete. Mm-hmm. And in order to be complete, you have, must have a, a, a good foundation and, and good knowledge of the word. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you're a babe in Christ, and that, that growth, it comes. Um, you know, you you have some kids that have growth spurts, and they just grew. Mm-hmm. You see, some, uh, maybe your niece or a nephew that you haven't seen in a while, and you say, "Oh, you got so big, you know, grew mm-hmm. up." And last time I seen you, it's the same thing with God. And and sometimes it seems like you're not growing. Mm-hmm. Um, you see, well, well, when you gonna grow? You so skinny. You need to feed that boy some <laughs> chicken. You need some collard greens, some cornbread. You know, uh, and the same thing. Um, Ezekiel said, "Eat the whole roll." Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes the evidence of, of what you need or, or, or what you believe that you need, it don't always come right away. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a time um, a lot of folks get discouraged right then and there. Um, but faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Um, uh, the word of God compares uh, like controlling a horse and a, or a ship that's out of control. Um, we, we put a bit in the horse's mouth or even uh, uh, the yoke around the oxen to control them. And this is what the word of God does. Um, like it's like being at sea without the word of God on a ship without a sail. Mm-hmm. Um, it will go aimlessly, mm-hmm. uh, um, or even a, a rowboat without its oars. You know, you, you will go aimlessly. Uh, you need something strong to keep you uh, going in the direction that you need to go. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's very important to understand it. Um, and and being that you knowing what God wants for you, um, but a lot of times. We don't understand what we want for ourselves. There, there's doubt about um, in terms of courage or even, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, belief in yourself, low self-esteem. 
Um, Cause sometimes folk go through so many things and so many struggles that, you know, they just don't have faith not not in God but not even in themselves. And um and so we talk about here that everyone wants to be a winner. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to win. We know that. Mm -hmm. And but some people don't know how to win or or don't have that drive in them to go forth uh, in our personal life or in our homes or even in our careers and our spiritual life. We want to win. Um, do you know anyone that gets up in the morning and, and say, I want to be a failure, I want to be a loss? Uh, uh, it may sound crazy, but the answer is yes. There are a lot of people that speak those words, that they speak the failure and speak defeat into their lives. Amen, mm -hmm. amen. Um, we talked about words, um, and you was, you was talking about how we put the bid, you know, um, in the horse's mouth to control where it goes and how um, the ship is controlled by a little piece that directs it. And we're talking about the word of God being our um, director. But in this scripture, it talks about the tongue, you know, and we also talked about life and death being in the power of the tongue. And this particular scripture, it talks about taming our mouth and how our mouth could put on fire the course of our life. So if you want to know how to be a winner, we have to first control our mouth. And a lot of times we say things to people and um, that might hurt them, our children, our spouses, and they believe what we say and we program in them to believe something um, that is not of God. Mm -hmm. And on here, um, I have a list of things that people say to themselves every day that is putting them on the wrong course of life. If, if you, um, one of the things is I can't remember names. You're speaking, you know, lack of memory to yourself. It's going to be another one of those days. It's just no use. I just know it won't work. I'm so clumsy. Everything I eat goes right to my waist. Mm. I can never afford the things I want. Um, I can't do math. I never um, get a break. I'm always broke. I, that sounds like mm. one of mine. Um, nobody wants to pay me what I am worth. If you want something d done right, you must do it yourself. I am losing my mind. Now, we do not want to say that because our mind, we don't want to lose our minds. I just cannot take it anymore. I hate my job. I get a cold every year. It's, it's too much. That's my, my daughter's favorite saying. And when we speak these words, um, sometimes we say them just to be saying them. Sometimes they're like slangs or just common words that we say all the time. But we need to be careful even with the little words that we say. Mm -hmm. And um, even in our downtime, I noticed that even people of faith, we're believing God for one thing. We say, um, in my ministry, I would like to have a lot of, uh, I need volunteers to be able to help with the transitional home and, and we need uh, a vehicle and we need someone to drive the vehicle. And then we turn around in the same breath and talk about, well, uh, you know, we can't let, you know, somebody um, ride the vehicle because they'd be all over the place. And, and, and we're speaking um, deaf to the ministry instead of, um, believe in God for someone that's faithful and, and trustworthy. Uh, we're saying things that are that are contrary to what we want in our life. So that's setting us up for failure. That's not preparing us to win. And um, we're coming to a close right now. But there are some things, you know, even from the time we're born to now, we are being programmed by what other people say to us. Uh, a lot of what we are saying to ourselves may be working against us. Um, just as she was saying that, you know, you have to understand that, as we stated earlier, so is a man thinking, so is he. Mm -hmm. um, it, it begins in your mind. Um, from the time we were born into now, you know, uh, we've been programmed. Um, things have been entering into our mind, even from children. Um, the things that children hear their mothers say or, or 
the things, the music that they listen to, the cartoons that they are watching, um, the commercials and everything from everything from a boy to a child, mm -hmm. uh, from a girl to a woman, um, you're being groomed, you're being groomed. And we understand that fact. Mm -hmm. We understand that. But God wants you to understand that that whatever you believe, whatever you choose to hold on to, um, these things affect your attitude and affect the decision that you make. Uh, when we discover what a person believes, we can't understand why they make some of the decisions that they do. Um, a lot of times we find that some folk come from an urban area and, and the way of thinking um, uh, if I may, um, even the cognitive thought process, sometimes they're, um, um, they're delinquent. Um, um, a lot of times we understand and we expect certain kind of people to act a certain way. Um, you expect a person that is learned and, and even mature to act a certain way. Um, some folk don't know how to act around certain people. Um, this is why companies send representations of themselves and, and they train people and to represent them in a well manner. It's the same thing with God. The Word of God comes to strengthen you and, and helps you to understand what you need. And as you're growing in God, you will be able not only to represent Him in terms of going out, but you're able to represent Him within yourself. And when He's within yourself, you're prepared to win. And your attitude and your thought process will begin to change. And it all begins with your mind. And after your mind, you begin to speak. Another way we can determine a person's path is listening to what they're saying during real talk time. A lot of times, we, we, we love to talk. We love to talk. And a lot of times, we can't listen. Um, I'm learning that. Um, I'm <coughs> 26, uh, and, but I'm still yet learning these things. Um, I'm at an age now where it's not important for a lot of things to happen as much as they used to be um, because I'm mature in some areas. Um, but we, we, we're going to go into this on part two. Um, there are a lot of things we want to share, and we pray that you will stay tuned or even on next week, and we're going to pick up right where we left off, and we're going to go into more and being prepared to win. And we're hoping and praying um, that what we're giving to you will be a help to you and, and possibly even to your ministry. I also want to let them know that we are on the air. We're doing great things for the Lord, and we believe in God for great things. Once again, my name is Elder Derek White. My name is Regina Tellus Ford. And we're building a kingdom. Amen. God's kingdom. Builder, God's kingdom builder. We're building God's kingdom. My people's kingdom.